All right, we are going live. Okay. I wish we could see who was here with us. All right, good morning. Thank you for joining us. If you are here with us, you know why you're here. It's for Cannabis is Medicine with Dr. Carmen Jones. Uh, we have the privilege of listening to a lecture from the founder of Wildflower Medical Consultants, who has been a doctor since the 90s. And she advocates on behalf of medical cannabis holistic healing to communities. Today, we're gonna to talk about obesity, diet, and nutrition. I'm pleased to introduce you all to Dr. Carmen Jones. Good morning, good morning. Thank you so much for having me. Um, it is a pleasure to be here. I appreciate the introduction. And yes, it's been quite a while that I've been practicing medicine, but to fill in a blank or two, I'm a pediatrician by training. And actually over the last 10 years, um, probably about four years prior to um, ending my, essentially my pediatric career, I started to see patients uh, that were choosing to use cannabis medicine. And because of this, that has led me to this much time in the cannabis uh, industry. And what I do and have learned every day continues to amaze me because of this incredible plan. So because I have a lot of material to cover, I'm gonna share a screen now and we'll do a little um, lecture, if you will, with a, we've got a lot of information. I don't want to spend all the time with that. I wanna leave time at the end for uh, questions. Should anyone have any, any questions? So. Let me share my screen. Can you confirm that you can see that? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna add it to the stream now. Okay. One second. All right. All right, it's in the screen. Okay. And can I'm you see it, sure. Dr. Jones? Um, I can see it. I just got a text message saying we can't get in no link. So where should people where should I direct people? They can't get in with that link? No, I'm gonna um, actually share the link right now. Um, really, really fast. Okay. And that could be a problem we have to address in the future. But the good news is we're recording so if anyone is interested, they can always go back and look at the recording. Okay, so cannabis is medicine. Uh, is it for you? Um, this is a topic that has obviously become very important over time because cannabis is almost all the conversation now in America, um, every, you know, in, in every regard, especially for people who want to consider it as an alternative. A um, little background, and it's a plant that's been on Earth probably since before humans have been. Um, I'm not going to go over all of this. You can take a second to take a look. But um, uh, all the way uh, from ancient China uh, to George Washington growing it uh, in the form of hemp uh, in the colonial times, uh, beginning of American life. It's always been with us. Uh, we've used it in medicine before. Here are some examples that predate the prohibition of cannabis. Um, historically, uh, cannabis um, was used, like I said here, uh, but shortly after the prohibition of alcohol, they decided to put cannabis under prohibition as well. Lots of reasons for that. Um, but main, 
mainly the reasons are because uh, they wanted to essentially vilify a certain group of people um, who were using it recreationally, main, mainly uh, Mexican immigrants that uh, worked uh, on the docks. There's a movie, horrible movie, Reefer Madness, you know, because they, it was going to turn you into a crazy person and um, send you uh, to harm society. Um, it turns out they did, in fact, uh, cause a harm on society because in the 1970s, um, President Nixon started what is now known as the failed war on drugs. And they actually criminalized the use of cannabis along with other hard or more dangerous drugs that included heroin and put it on the newly created um, DEA uh, schedule uh, one as a dangerous drug with no medicinal value. And so this was all very political, but as we move forward, uh, states begin to sort of rebel, do their own thing, and it took a while to the mid 90s till today, but now we have uh, cannabis laws for usage in some form to date on all, uh, all states' books with the exception of two. And when I first wrote this lecture, it was seven, but we've since had some uh, laws pass, and now we've added five more states with cannabis laws on the books. So how far have we come? Problem is it still remains a schedule one drug. So we are um, just waiting for the federal government to come along. So this is what the plant looks like, the leaves. You might've heard some of these names, sativa, indica, ruderalis. A lot of people have heard of sativa and indica, but don't get too hung up on that. That's just part of the story. Commonly though, we know that the sativa plant tends to be taller, higher, also uh, used for hemp, um, or hemp is a cannabis sativa var variety. Some of the common effects are listed there, including you know, creativity, focus, helps with nausea and your appetite, Etc. The cannabis indica plant tends to be a little shorter, bushier, and they suggest that it has a skunk smell. Um, some of the conditions it can help with include pain, anxiety, muscle spasms, etc. And cannabis ruderalis right now, it kind of is a wild version of the plant, although I'm told they are working with that to uh, find medicinal uh, value in it as well. So what's hemp? Hemp is a version of the uh, cannabis sativa plant. The only difference, the main, the main difference between hemp and marijuana as we know it is the concentration of the chemical called THC. People will hear those that, that name a lot and that is because THC uh, which stands for uh, delta 9 tetrahydrocannabinol, um, has, uh, it, it's dependent on how much uh, concentration is in each. And so something that's listed as, tested as 0.3% or less is considered hemp. If it has more than that, in terms of percentage of that chemical in the plant, it is marijuana, and that is the chemical that causes the psychoactive effects that you feel when um, using that, uh, when using cannabis. And it's listed here as a side effect, and that's because it's a side effect that people desire. Um, some people really prefer that psychoactive effect. It helps them to um, uh, be more calm, enjoy life. All right, so how does cannabis work in the body? We have what they called in our body, the endocannabinoid system. And this is new. I mean, they only discovered this in the early 90s. And that's about the time I was finishing up medical school. So they certainly weren't teaching it to doctors, which is why very likely your doctor doesn't know about it, may not have even heard of it. But this is a fully functioning system in our body, similar 
to you know how we describe the nervous system or the cardiovascular system or the endocrine system. This is an endocannabinoid system. You'll hear me mention that again throughout the lecture. Um, it is still being researched, but for right now, what we know about it is um, it helps to play a role in regulating normal processes in our body, including sleep, mood, appetite, memory, reproduction, and fertility. Whether you do anything or not, it's there working. It's just that a lot of us have not properly cared for or fed our endocannabinoid system so that it works even more efficiently. This is what a schematic of it looks like. Clearly a very uh, amateur or elementary version of how to uh, understand it. But the CB1 and CB2 are referred to as receptors. And uh, these are various receptors that work in our bodies um, on different areas. And I like to call it an assist so for instance, if your immune system is um, you know, trying to fight something, that endocannabinoid system will come along and help it do its thing. It's the assist essentially to these other systems. And you can see what they are here listed on the chart. All right, so I mentioned THC earlier. What I didn't mention was CBD, cannabidiol. These are known as cannabinoids. And these are larger molecules that are found as major components of the um, uh, product, uh, if you will, the chemical that helps the endocannabinoid system work. These are often, when, when found in the plant, like, like cannabis, this is considered a phytocannabinoid, phyto for plant. But this uh, help right? These regulate how uh, cells communicate with each other, as I mentioned earlier. And um, what we don't often talk about is that way there are way more cannabinoids in the body uh, than THC and CBD. It's just that THC and CBD are the ones that we are um, referring to most in society. THC because of the euphoric effect that it feels that I mentioned earlier and CBD because of its reported, you know, uh, miracle healing for, for almost everything else. Obviously there's more to that story, but because people uh, know those two main cannabinoids, those are the ones that are often discussed. However, there's well over a hundred by now that have been discovered, different types of cannabinoids. The thing is, to remember is they work together in the body. The whole idea, and you will hear me say this later, is to maintain balance in the body. We want to create balance in our lives. That's always gonna be the key. Another component of the um, plant is called terpenes. If you see this beautiful picture of lovely, uh, colorful seeds, berries, fruits, nuts, peppers, I see, cinnamon. These are called, these is, this is a representation of terpenes. Terpenes actually provide the, the, the aroma to whatever plant, leaf, or uh, product that we're talking about. Um, everyone at some point has tried to uh, peel their orange and gotten those uh, little flaky white you know, particles on it, on your hands. Other people have zested a lemon into their foods. Those are terpenes that you are interacting with. Well, the cannabis plant is no different. It's a plant. It has various characteristics that include terpenes that give it each variety its various smell. And what we also learned is that there are medicinal value there is a medicinal value associated with these uh, chemicals as well. Um, the fact that it's there along with the cannabinoids that I just mentioned and the many, many other particles and chemicals and components of the plant, we call that when used properly, the entourage effect. In other words, you can see at the bottom there, a modulating mechanism between the psychoactive and non-psychoactive cannabis 
excuse me, compounds, all of this working together. This is important because a lot of times patients are sold a product that is called an isolate. And what that refers to is some manufacturer has isolated all of the other particles, chemicals, cannabinoids, terpenes out of the plant, out of the product and put it in a bottle and said, here, take this, this CBD, see how pure and clear, et cetera, it is. Well, I kind of want it to be muddy and messy because then I know that all those other chemicals, terpenes, et cetera, are present and, and working together to make me feel better. All right, so in America, who's using cannabis? Well, right now we have uh, discovered that usage among adults over 65 has increased over 300%. Well, go figure, because these are the people who typically need it. Uh, a lot of times as you get older, you start having um, more medical issues, even if it's just simple aches and pains of arthritis. Um, so they're the ones using it. Um, people do worry about the teenagers. However, according to the statistics, the teenage use has gone down or certainly has set, stable, stabilized. These are many of the conditions uh, that cannabis is used for. And I've mentioned some of them earlier, we'll move on. And this is one of my favorite charts um, suggesting which cannabinoids work in different areas of the body. And you can kind of look along and see. Uh, there's a couple of things I want to point out. If you look under the digestive system, you have cannabinoids that increase or decrease appetite. And if you look over under the endocrine section in the upper right, third one down reduces blood sugar levels, CBD. So this is important as we move into the uh, portion of the discussion with regards to uh, obesity, diet, and nutrition, and how it relates to cannabis. So uh, everybody at some point has seen a chart similar to this, this discussing your body mass index. Whenever you go to the doctor, they weigh you. Um, they know how tall you are, they know your age, and they come up with a calculation called the BMI, body mass index. Um, if you look down below on that grid, in, or, in order to be in the normal range, you can only get to be the green one. Anything above that is considered overweight or obese. And unfortunately, Americans do not do well with this uh, um, fact. Excuse me. Forty-two point four percent of Americans are obese right now. That's an astounding amount of people. Um, naturally, it leads to other conditions, including heart disease, stroke, and diabetes. Some types of cancers and costs a lot of money, those different um, illnesses to, to maintain or to care for. If you look a little closer, um, non-Hispanic Black Americans are 49.6% of us are overweight or obese. Um, the prevalence increases as your age does and the socioeconomic status matters as well. I think the thing that was most uh, impressive here in this long list of distinguishing factors is on the very bottom. Among non-Hispanic Black women, there was no difference in obesity prevalence by income. And this is different in all other groups because all other groups essentially lower income, poor, more uh, poorly educated people were the ones that were found to be more obese, except for in black women, it didn't matter. Um, obesity affects your body in, in pretty negative ways. Everything listed here on the chart, not good. Stroke, sleep apnea, heart disease, high cholesterol, diabetes, fatty liver, joint pain, some cancers. 
And I can attest to that arthritis on the knees. But so many diets, what to choose from? I mean, every day, every way, they're always throwing different things at us. We keep trying over and over and over different things. They don't always work. My understanding in the psychology of our minds is pick the one that you can do. Pick the one that you can stick to. <clears throat> when I'm talking to patients, when I'm talking to myself, I say, if God made it, eat it. In other words, you want to try to choose foods that are natural. Choose foods that are unbothered, unaltered. All the things you see on that beautiful table there, um, people can certainly be satisfied and filled. If the food does not satisfy you, if you are denying yourself, you will probably not be successful in the diet. But more guidelines are listed here on this chart. And if you look in the bottom right, that is the portion plate that is um, uh, published, published by the CDC on how your plate should look. There are tons of people talking about things like uh, uh, gluten-free or don't eat any dairy. Um, remember, the, the, the idea is balance. When you remove one entire group food group and the others have to take over, yes, you will likely get short-term gains. But that's very difficult to maintain in a long-term situation. Sometimes can even be unhealthy. Uh, the discussion about dairy, we won't have today, uh, but there are um, some valid concerns with regards to dairy, particularly with regards to certain ethnic groups. It is uh, not entirely good for us, but not entirely bad. And you can still get some value depending on the source. All right. So how does this connect to cannabis? Does smoking weed really help you lose weight? So there have been studies on this and the studies are showing that people who smoke weed on a regular basis, or let me be more scientific, consume cannabis on a regular basis tend to have a lower BMI. And part of this they believe is because of what's listed here. If you happen to uh, use cannabis as medicine, a lot of times it helps in reducing your pain, increasing your mobility. Sometimes it causes people to drink less alcohol, lowers your stress levels, improves your sleep, and boosts your metabolism. All these things are exactly what we as doctors tell patients to try and do when they're trying to lose weight. You have to, you can't lose weight if you're in pain. Some of the pain medicines that are prescribed often will cause people to um, gain weight. <clears throat> if you can't move around because you're hurting or somehow restricted, then of course you can't exercise. And if you can't exercise, you can't lose weight. This kind of makes some logical sense. There are more uh, in-depth scientific reasons involving the endocannabinoid system that um, the, the studies have shown to um, cause weight loss to occur, but that is way more complicated than, than today. So what about those people who say, when you, don't you get the munchies when you smoke weed? And so that is uh, not exactly true. Not everybody will get the munchies, not every cannabis uh, strain and or type will cause you to have the munchies. But that would be really important for someone who might have difficulty eating because maybe they're on chemotherapy and they're nauseous. So that is part of what I help to do when talking to patients, determine what is the right thing for you to use. At what point do you need to use this type of cannabis versus that type. And when I say type, I mean um, which combination of cannabinoids and terpenes do you need? All right, <clears throat> we'll move to the next. So which type of terpenes do you need? 
So um, there's a cannabinoid that was on that chart with the, the figure earlier that discussed, um, let me see, appetite suppressant, um, and it was THCV. And it was on that cannabis man chart that I mentioned, uh, that I pointed out earlier. The THCV is not a widely available cannabinoid, uh, particularly in America just yet. There is a couple of strains, African descent, and my understanding is there's a really small profile of um, therapeutic profile there. In other words, too much of that will cause some negative side effects. Too little, maybe not get the appetite suppressant, but not actually widely available at this moment in America. However, these are the common terpenes that are often found in cannabis today. And they're certainly um, the ones that are most likely to be tested for in whatever region you're in. So let's focus down on number five, humulene. Right there, humulene is known to be an appetite suppressant. So if that is important to you, uh, search for products when you go to the dispensary that contain humulene and try it out. See if that helps with your appetite suppressant, if that's your issue. And as you can see, there's other uh, medicinal values tied to these terpenes as you hopefully have had a chance to look at. The other thing to remember is all of this is pretty much controlled by our genetics. Um, and because we know that your medical conditions, good uh, genes, they say you must have really good genes, you never get sick. Or uh, I have a family member um, who has been uh, pretty much eating and drinking whatever they want their whole life and they're healthy as a horse. That's genetics. So same thing applies for cannab cannabis. If you have um, ever tried cannabis and you cannot uh, maintain uh, uh, using very much of it, you might have what they call uh, slow metabolism for cannabis. And then most of us know someone who can just smoke all day, run a Fortune 500 company and never miss a beat. And you wonder, how do they do that? Again, it's likely their genetics. So there are various companies that are popping up to try and help us understand this. And you can actually uh, submit your DNA to have it analyzed to see what type of cannabis, meta cannabis metabolizer you might be. Because this is, this is very valuable information when it comes to um, how your body interacts with cannabis and how um, what, what products to use. And I uh, offer this service with my practice. <clears throat> this is important. A lot of us are so busy, we never stop. It's important to our health that we be mindful about everything, but especially about what we're eating. Think about it. We are coming, going all the time, uh, just grabbing this, grabbing that. We're not mindful about what we're putting in our bodies. A lot of times this is the, the case. So mindfulness is a catchword that I know people have started to hear um, more and more, and it's a good thing. It doesn't only refer to meditation like this gentleman. It refers to almost every aspect of your life. And I wanna distinguish right now mindfulness or meditation versus prayer. I think of it like when you're praying, you're having almost a conversation. You're asking for things, you're being grateful for things, all very important, all very good. When you're being mindful, it's almost the opposite. You're shutting it all down. You're not trying to ask for, interact. You're just being quiet. And I believe that's a time where you actually can hear and receive more spiritually. 
All right, so now I've decided I'm gonna use cannabis as medicine. I'm gonna give it a try because this is bothering me. That is bothering me. What do I do? And if you've ever been in a dispensary, it could be a bit overwhelming. And that is why it's important for us to be able to use uh, a place that is uh, uh, qualified with very good bud tenders, they call them, to help us um, learn uh, about what's best for you. But I always encourage patients to do their homework before going because I want it to be a conversation. I want you to participate in your care. All of these things, there's the actual plant you can use, which is the most common way. Uh, we call the actual plant the flower when you go into the dispensary. Um, and the cartridge in the middle is considered a vape. And this is uh, where the oil of the flower has been concentrated and you essentially are warming up the oil. Both of those are methods of inhalation. If that's not your thing, if you wanna eat it, there's lots and lots of goodies. Everything from coffee, tea, honey, sodas, foods. Uh, you see chocolates there. Um, they make actually tinctures that can go under your tongue. Uh, topicals, lotions, ointments. Um, suppositories. They make uh, everything from nasal spray to suppositories is what I usually tell patients. And people are blown away because they don't realize that the <clears throat> the product production lines are, are pretty much unlimited. How do you want to use it? And the thing I say is I don't really care, just use it so that you are um, feeding your endocannabinoid system. This is a complicated chart, so I won't stay here long, but it just suggests how cannabis is used or how it's broken down or metabolized in your body, dependent on the method of uh, usage. So inhalation gets you immediate access to the cannabis. Uh, onset on the bottom and the bottom uh, section of this chart is very fast. Within three to 10 minutes, you're feeling the effects of the of the product. If you eat it, it has to go through your GI system first, you know, pass through your liver, through your intestines, then into your bloodstream. So that can take anywhere between 40 minutes and a couple hours. Sublingual, underneath your tongue, the tinctures, the, the dropper that people often buy. People often will swallow it. I'm not understanding that the whole point, it's called a tincture versus something oral uh, uh, that you eat or swallow like a drink is because you should be putting it underneath your tongue. There's a lot of uh, mucosal tissue there and a lot of veins and arteries, blood flow, and you leave it under your tongue for about 30 seconds for it to absorb into your system. And it, it does pretty fast, 10 to 20 minutes. Uh, in that method. And that method is preferred by a lot of people. Sort of the, I guess, the in-between. All of these different products that you're trying when you go to the dispensary, a lot of times people don't pay for what they're, pay attention to what they're buying. In other words, someone may make a suggestion here, try this. You go and you try it. Next time you go, you may get another thing. Um, I found this app uh, that I like called Tetragram. And part of what I like about it is it helps people remember what they felt like when they used this particular strain of cannabis. And so this is a way of monitoring uh, or helping you remember what you used uh, so that when you go back, if you try something else, you'll enter that. Okay, that one didn't make me feel so good. Or I don't think that one was as effective on taking care of whatever condition I'm using it for. And this is a good way to learn it. <clears throat> so what's the future? Looks like I need to update my chart because I think that uh, this 35 is now um, changed after the uh, most recent election. But certainly America's on board. America has taken back control of its cannabis life and wants to continue to use it.
Um, the statistic that I saw last, I think, says that something like well over 60 some percent of Americans are in favor of legalizing and certainly decriminalizing. Obviously what we do with CEIC, the Cannabis Equity and Inclusion Community is uh, help fight for rights, cannabis rights essentially, for equality and for equity among all uh, uh, sectors, but especially um, as uh, many of the owners, entrepreneurs are not representative of people that have been negatively affected by the war, sorry, the failed war on drugs um, with regards to cannabis. We just need to get it off the schedule and allow uh, pa patients to use it um, more freely. Hopefully something like that will happen this year. Here's a fun thing you might remember. <laughs> I'm gonna grab a bite to eat. You want like a sandwich or something? Uh, what kind of sandwich ain't too fattening? I have a sandwich. I have a sandwich. I have a sandwich. <laughs> I'll be back in a few minutes. Right. Hopefully you enjoyed that because we're talking about obesity, diet and nutrition. Uh, um, it's not about denying yourself. It's about finding that balance. And a lot of times, we don't pay attention because we're not being mindful. We're just eating. And a lot of times it's because it feels good. But um, half a sandwich is always going to be better than a full sandwich. And of course, this weed is from the earth. Got to put this here for you and for me. Take advantage, man. Take advantage. And that is it for me. So hopefully uh, you learned something today. And if... Uh, there are any questions, I'll be ready to take them right now. So thank you. Hey, that was wonderful. Thank you so much, very informative. Um, you said something about African terpenes or African strains. Yeah, there's, um. well, I think the most, most common one now is I want to say it's urban poison. Um, if you were to if you were to search for THCV, you will find that um, there's very few strains with it in it, and that it's because the genetics are from an African plant. And again, that tends to be it's a sativa as well, and the, the therapeutic profile is very narrow on it. In other words. The negative side effect that sometimes people get, get with sativas are um, what's it? Uh, uh, the paranoia, and so apparently you really have to be really careful with that one because um, you don't want to uh, overdo it and then end up with a negative side effect, not helping you, uh, not providing you with the best outcome. <clears throat> Okay. Um, well, we have three viewers in from Facebook. So if you have any questions, go ahead and pop those into the comment section for Dr. Jones. I have a question myself. Um, when I smoke cannabis, I feel like I get skinnier. And somebody told me that that's because it's dehydrating me and my fat cells are getting really flat. And that's why I end up looking thin. Does that sound right? Or, and then I also heard that some people lose weight from smoking cannabis because they're allergic to it or something like that. And so they lose weight. I don't know. Okay. Uh, well, I, I've not heard of either of those things. From the medical standpoint, it, it can get complicated, but it's actually all based on your metabolism. And so, yeah, fat cells are involved, but not in that way. Um, what it does is it helps metabolize the fat that you're intake, you're eating in a different way. So mm. we've heard of omega, omega fatty acids, right? It's kind of became mm -hmm. a big little thing is we 
Americans were dealing with heart disease. And so we needed to get our healthy fats, uh, salmon, nuts, so the omega-6s, omega-3s. The older you get, the more your doctor's going to talk to you about those things. Um, but if those are in, out of balance, then you can have detrimental effects on your heart. So what they, the studies have shown is that cannabis actually helps modulate the proper amount of the omega-6, omega-3 ratio in your body. So okay. yes, it's involved in some fat metabolism, but not in the form of a dehydrated situation. And I, w I guess you'd have to really be <laughs> emaciated for that to show uh, dehydrated. Yeah, I mean, for your it to show on you the way you just described, you'd have to be significantly dehydrated. So probably not that, what was the second way? It's, there was, probably, it's Is it probably my metabolism just going faster when I'm, sm I'm smoking cannabis? Oh no, it just may be a feeling that you get. It, if we were to scientifically try to measure it, I don't know that we would see what you're feeling. Well, it's more of what I feel like I see. I feel like I get slimmer when yeah. I'm using cannabis daily. Yeah, well, you might be. But again, if we were to actually map it out properly, I don't know how significant the difference would be. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> All right, does anyone have any questions? We have one viewer right now. Uh, Katri is here with us, but she can't be completely here. She's just listening in. So hi, Katri. <laughs> Um, let's see if we have any questions. Not at the moment. Was there anything else that you would like to add to this discussion, Dr. Jones? Well, yeah, um, I realized that um, this is our first that, um, this is our event and um, that until we get a, a better following, um, you know, this is this is going to happen, but hopefully people will have a chance to go back and review it on on the other platforms, YouTube, I guess, uh, and get some valuable information. And if not, I will repeat this, uh, some of these same things uh, as we uh, go into the other topics. Uh, so mm -hmm. if uh, it, it's not a problem, they didn't miss much. Uh, again, some of the uh, future topics will be interchangeable, uh, easily re-referenced. So we'll be good. I appreciate you uh, having me. Absolutely. We definitely appreciate you and your voice as director of our medical voices for CEIC. Um, mm -hmm. I'll thank you for attending our first Cannabis is Medicine lecture. We have four more lectures each Saturday until the first week of August. All of them are going to be at 10. Uh, the next topic include to diabetes, heart disease, uh, autoimmune disease, female and male issues, and more. Uh, make sure you don't miss any of this information by subscribing to our YouTube channel. Also, follow us on Instagram, um, like us on Facebook, Make sure you don't miss information. Um, also, make sure you follow Dr. Carmen Jones and check out her website uh, out for medical consultants. All of this information I will leave in the comment section. Um, so feel free to look through them and make sure you follow us. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, until next time, we'll see you next Saturday morning. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right. All right. Oh, and broadcast. Well, that went really well. How do you feel? Can you hear me?
I can't hear you for some reason. Oh, 